Mayday, Jan, where are you? And uh, if you could put your, um, there you are, and unmute yourself, that's it. All Hello, right. everybody. So I hope everyone can see my screen. I'm, I'm going to switch to from the camera view to, to the presentation, if that's OK. Is that visible? That yes, is good. Visible. OK, perfect. Great. Uh, thanks for having us today. Mayday is a real-time disaster and incident information services platform. Um, we are based out of Irvine, California. I, I started this company about a year and a half ago uh, with the hope of um, democratizing you know, real-time uh, disaster information services to uh, not just first responders, but also civilians. Uh, this is an area where uh, there's a lot of gap in terms of real-time information services. And at the same time, uh, we are effectively seeing uh, billion dollar events becoming the new norm. You know, you're, you're going from um, events which were typically seasonal and, and somewhat predictable to highly random and, and destructive events. And, and in the U.S., especially uh, wildfires, uh, hurricanes and, and floodings are becoming uh, extremely destructive events and, and persistent events that we've tried to uh, focus on in our journey as, as our initial efforts. Canada, of course, you know, speaks to the same picture, and this is a, a global pattern, as, as you've probably seen um, over the past you know, decade, for example, the U.S. has you know, incurred over a trillion and a half in terms of damages followed by, by China and Japan. Um, when uh, we, we started this company, we wanted to sort of look at disaster management in, in a completely different way, given you know, how climate change has rendered every, everything obsolete, basically. Um, so um, we've come up with an agnostic way of, of detecting uh, disasters real time and, and with, with wildfires being our focus, we've been able to successfully uh, detect some 15, um, some 95% some, um, of, of, of wildfires within the first 15 minutes of, of their inception in the past uh, couple of years um, from 23,000 miles above sea level. Um, you know, just, just one, one layers of sensors that we've, we've explored in, in our approach. Uh, but, but essentially, this, this goes into, into the nature of these events. So, so just to give you some more context, with the wildfire, for example, um, you know, if you can, you can get to these events early on, you're looking at, at, at a fairly manageable event versus you know, the next 15 or 30 minutes, it, it, it's a whole different event. So the campfire, for example, was burning to 150 homes after 30 minutes of its inception. So, so our hope is, is, is to make it available for this wildfire season that's coming up very early. Um, so, so, so at least we could you know, detect some of these events early to contain them. But our long-term journey is, is around prevention and continuous education, which, which is what Mayday provides. Um, so just to add some more details in terms of how we've come up uh, with this platform, we're re leveraging the highest number of uh, sensors available from a real-time perspective. Um, we're, we're, we're using two geostationary satellites, scanning some 4.8 billion pixels every five to 10 minutes. Each pixel size is one and a half by one and a half miles. That makes us the fastest in terms of processing of, of just satellite imagery. Uh, then we're leveraging lower orbiting satellites um, from, from public and private entities like NASA and NOAA. Um, in addition to that, we have 65,000 traffic cameras and um, localized weather, as well as access to real-time social media sentiment through Twitter's partnership, and some 400 public radio channels. So all of 911 channels effectively looking at these disasters from 23,000 miles above sea level, going down to various layers of information that, that collectively have made us the fastest uh, provider. In addition, uh, what we've tried to do in our proactive mission, uh, we capture um, pertinent information such as pet information, you know, a lot of times during disasters, folks lose their pets or, or their, their events that affect these pets. So we capture information such as, you know, their names, pictures, and in California, especially, you have, you have horses, which are prized assets, and, and it, it's imperative to know ahead of time when it comes to evacuation. So pools are used by, by, by first responders for, for additional reservoirs that we capture, as well as special needs such as um, you know, things like needing oxygen tanks, a wheelchair, which can also help re-canvas uh, the neighborhood during an event. So um, what we've basically put together and, and, and the ways we're disrupting this industry is 
is we're adding the largest number of real-time data sources and, and passing these through uh, our various layers of verification. So computer vision, machine learning, but at the same time, we're using natural language processing and sentiment analysis to bring all these sources together. Um, we're building uh, a 24 seven monitoring um, center. So it's similar to an alarm company and how they would effectively track assets. Our, our model is very similar. And, and we're communicating to dispatch centers uh, with, with, with uh, firefighters, uh, police, and, and EMS. And at the same time, we've built in a two-way messaging with, with, between first responders and, and um, households and civilians that currently doesn't exist. So you're prob you've probably seen indiscriminate Amber Alerts. Our, our communications are very event-centric and can be tracked down to an individual throughout the event's life cycle. So um, in our journey, we've basically brought in events from USGS, the National Weather Service, um, the EPA, as well as all the assets from 911. In addition to that, we've come up with a whole new way of, of detecting, well, predicting, detecting, and forecasting wildfires. Um, and in, in the past season, so this season already, in the 2022 season, we've detected the, the car, uh, sorry, the, the, the bar and the red fire some hour and 15 minutes ahead of the, a 911 call. So, so that's the fastest uh, on the planet, and, and we're continuing to build on this. Um, with that being said, um, I'd like to quickly show an example of how this all comes together. So that's the easy fire and uh, probably a couple of other examples and I'm happy to dive into to questions after the call. Um, hopefully there's enough time to go through some of these items today. So um, with any event, we build satellite imagery every five minutes um, that, that talks to the detection of that event. So we go through verifications every five minutes and update that life cycle. Um, we have camera imagery that supports that on the ground and sometimes it's used as the only source of truth. And then through, through Twitter, we have social sentiment analysis, but also event-centric information. So all this information from citizen journalists, um, you know, so for example, with Easy Fire, the Reagan Library was being affected. Um, so all this real-time information is available for first responders, but as well as civilians to uh, make educated and, and, and effective decisions about this, 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 this process, whether it's evacuation or planning or just getting to safety, um, all this information is available real-time. Um, another example, uh, is the Getty fire. So for folks out of LA, you've probably seen this. Um, we detected this event um, um, effectively some, some 10 minutes ahead of 911 with our satellites. Um, same idea, effectively seeing that real time allows for um, early containment and, and, and the same process can be applied to, to other events, which is what we're focusing on. So flooding is our next product that we've started to improve on. And um, so if I may, I'm just going to skip to our journey. So just to take a step back in terms of our journey, uh, we're launching with um, two dispatch centers in, in California. So 14 cities, 2 million civilians, uh, starting from June 15th. Um, uh, we had planned on opening our California operations center, but with COVID-19, we're delaying that by a couple of months. Um, and we're also releasing our mobile app to a select group of individuals and first responders within these communities. Um, um, and and if effectively at the end of Q3, we're planning on opening our dispatch centers and our civilian launch to most of California and parts of Texas. Um, we're launching a couple of programs with NASA and NOAA in terms of data sharing and, and joint research. So we've come up with a new baseline for, for disaster management around wildfire detection, and we're hoping to use this for, for additional improvements. Um, in Q4, we're planning on opening our Texas Operations Center that effectively supports the 10 Western states and part of Midwest. And um, as, as hopefully towards the early parts of next year, we would have most of the US um, covered with some international projects coming in through the National Weather Service. And these are countries which are prone to wildfires. So what we've done in the US and essentially the Americas has also been done in the other part of the world. Um, so in Australia and New Zealand, we can bring in the same essentially set of services. Canada, Chile, Peru, Brazil, and Paraguay, and Mexico are the countries that we're, we're focusing on, uh, given the severity of the fire seasons they're experiencing and their agency for, for disaster management in a centralized fashion. And Q3 and Q4 is effectively an expansion to other parts of the world, and additional um, state and, and city level products, which is what California is serving as a template. 
Uh, with that being said, I'm happy to take any of your questions if I could answer them on this call and happy to have a conversation after as well. All right, thanks, Kian. I am um, Jim. Yeah, um, I have lost my screen, Anne. Can you hear me? We can hear you just fine. Yeah, I've lost my screen completely, so I don't know what's going on. Okay, we can hear you and see you. Can you hear the get the Q and A? I can't. No, I've got nothing on my okay. screen. Absolutely so nothing. I'm on the Q and A. Well, what? You're on the Q and A. I'm so passing you, it over to you. So you always have some questions. So um, why don't I ask you what kind of questions do you have? Because you tend to always be the one to start us off. Um, I have I have one question in particular that I've been pressing to ask Kian for actually for a little while. Um, that is, um, if there are countries that have um, kind of their own state run grids and um, then have to switch to, you know, say for example, that there is a nationwide crisis like bushfires in Australia, there is a national um, system, but all of the states have kind of differing kind of more cultural, different different kinds of competing systems, if you like. Um, how can we coordinate all those competing systems so that we have some uniformity at the federal level? So that's that's essentially what Mayday does. Mayday creates a common operating picture for everybody. So, so through Mayday, Mayday becomes a conduit, Mayday becomes a platform for visibility, but also the conduit for messaging. And, and in areas where you have infrastructure damage, we have drones and other entities that we've tried for augmented data provision to, to get folks out to safety. So, but that's, that's effectively the, the, the biggest value of Mayday, which is taking away all those inefficiencies and creating a centralized platform. Um, that fragmented nature goes away, which reduces response time and allows for faster coordination and, and effectively reduction of damage. So you in essentially see yourself as a huge systems integrator across all these different platforms, these different data streams, these different sources, whether it's satellite or other ways of getting the data in the first place? Yes, yeah, so, so effectively we've brought in raw data that gets processed through AI and machine learning. Um, so with wildfires, we're using geostationary satellites um, as well as, so, so lower orbiting uh, is every three hours in terms of updates, geostationary is, is every five to 10 minutes. That kind of real time processing has never happened before, but if it has, it's, it's happened as, as, as an R&D um, level with NASA and NOAA. So, so we're bringing that to public and first responders. Um, and at the same time, um, we see this as a new way of approaching uh, disasters because they're just not effectively containable. They're not sustainable. Um, so, so being able to get to them early on allows you to, to manage these as opposed to having to deal with like 10 or 20 in one day and add a pandemic on top of that. You have all these layers of complication that is, is just not sustainable in the long run. So, so made it changes of, that. So speaking of competition, what you just said that word what I mean, what is going on in the competitive landscape around this because we are seeing more um, a variety of different solutions that are addre addressing uh, disasters in one way or another whether it's um, you know hurricanes or whatever um, right. especially as we start looking at it's more extreme weather patterns due to climate yeah. change We've seen some, some, some competition in terms of detection and at the same time forecasting. Based on what we've seen, uh, the approaches that we've taken shaves that detection time markedly. So, so the idea of detecting events before 911 and 911 coming in from, from the ground level, uh, seeing that ahead of time, I, th I think it's something that's new with Mayday. And the idea of centralizing and using this as a command and control platform is, is, is new with Mayday. Um, so, um, all those layers continue to add intelligence and education. So, so we've just tried to standardize that across the board, not just with one event, um, as a whole new way of approaching this. So that's effectively one of the other differentiators in terms of its agnostic nature, but at the same time, ease of use and plug and play nature that, that so we're introducing. What in your system is proprietary um, and, and what helps you keep that, those barriers of, other, of entry for other players? So, so the approach to, to detection, real-time detection using imagery, uh, it goes beyond computer vision. It has a lot of machine learning and nuances and training that, that we've, we've put together and, and the science around um, detection of that. So, so that's, that's our IP. 
And then effectively using these together also takes a lot of machine learning engineering. So the social sentiment and 911. So that's that's the training that we see ourselves ahead of everybody by about a year and a half. But you know, it's only a matter of time before we we can see folks trying to mimic some of these approaches. So our partnership with NOAA and NASA introduces a new slide into this, um, where we add new layers of masking, new layers of sensitivity, new layers of AI that improves detection even, even further. So, so, so that's, that's where we are in terms of our journey and, and value differentiation. Okay, and then like our audience, like I mentioned before, we're really getting an audience of people that are looking how to assist entrepreneurs. So we had a very clear question. What, are you, what help are you looking for? Looking for funding, looking for customers, partners. What's next? What do you need? Um, so, so in terms of our funding, we're looking to raise our, so we're starting to look at our round A towards the end of Q3, Q4. So we're certainly happy to discuss um, in that realm. And also in terms of, um, so customer additions, our journey is starting with two strategic dispatch centers. So in Monterey and Anaheim, um, and we're, we're hoping to add all of dispatch centers in California by the end of August. And these are covered through um, either utility or insurance territories that we're sort of bringing that whole ecosystem together. I'm happy to talk to folks who, who like to be partners into this ecosystem, whether it's through insurance or just getting their counties involved um, through the educational aspects of this platform with students and, 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 and service members being able to use this for free. We also hope to add volunteers to educate their community, be captains that can you know, take, part of, they take part in these educational campaigns ahead of time. Imagine making March a disaster awareness month you know, across the state. So we can learn from the previous seasons and talk about some preventative measures. So we're certainly looking for help for volunteers. We we're looking at funding for a couple of months from now. And in terms of partnerships, we would always love to learn um, your feedback and some of the things we've done in terms of expanding this with cities and counties and, and other value providers. All right, Kian, I am going to wrap up now. Thank you very much. There have been other questions. Uh, related specifically that are more uh, probably best set on a one-on-one -on -one about exit strategies and growth plans mm -hmm. and and funding and um, those are best set on a separate calls so if anybody is looking for more information and wants us to make a connection please do so and thank you Kian.